Hi everyone, this lecture focuses on the social determinants of health. Uh, one of the things that we had already previously discussed is that health, uh, that health is more than just simply the absence of illness. This was the old pre-1950 definition um, by the American uh, Medical Association. But since that time in the 1950s, we've actually had to take a much more holistic approach to how we think we, how we begin to think about health. And so, uh, generally speaking, in the contemporary sense, health is achieved by finding wellness in four key areas. The physical, mental and emotional, social and spiritual state of well-being. I wanted to just highlight a few sort of elements uh, in these four key areas. Obviously, physical health is, is the one that we are probably most familiar with. And this is a state that your bodily structures and systems are, at, are in at any given time. It encompasses what you feel and what you sense. So in other words, physically, how are you feeling? Are you, quote unquote, under the weather? Um, do you physically feel okay? Do you have enough vitamins? What are your, you know, what is your white cell counts? Those types of things that we would measure in a typical physician's appointment. Then we have mental and emotional health. This refers to the condition of your mind and your ability to balance your emotions. It includes how you respond to daily stress, the life situations you encounter, and how self-aware you are. And so in this particular area, obviously, um, it, it focuses in on sure, your mental acuity, uh, your ability to handle everyday situations. Um, this would also include things like depressive episodes, um, or are there a lot of ups and downs in your life in terms of mental and emotional health? Then we have social health. And really, this is about your connection to other people. It involves the quality of types of relationships you have with um, the different types of people you have in your life, whether that's family or friends, coworkers, classmates. Um, social health is also, also is a measure of how well you get along with others. In other words, um, are you tolerant of others? Are you open-minded? Can you develop meaningful relationships and friendships? How connected you are to people can also, we, research shows that the more connected you are to people, um, the overall uh, the overall improvement, it, it overall improves your, your well-being. And this is particularly so as you get older. Um, they find that social health, particularly for those who are elderly, um, is increasingly important because it keeps them engaged in overall social life. And then we have spiritual health. Um, this can have something to do with someone's religiosity, um, but, it's not but it's not a necessity to be involved with a religious community. Spiritual health has more to do with your morals and values and how they influence the direction your life takes. Um, do you have a strong set of values and, character and, and, and a sense of character that you follow in life that helps you discern right from wrong? Um, and that it helps you answer questions in, re in regards to your existence. Probably most importantly, when we think about this um, the, in those four areas, is that you want to achieve a balance. A balance across all four areas to make sure that you're holistically healthy and that you have an overall sense of well-being that goes beyond uh, you know, just one particular area. It's important to note that when we talk about health, it's not a solidary endeavor that's achieved by individuals, that you're actually part of a larger social system. So social systems, according to Johnson, is the pattern series of interrelationships existing between individuals, groups, and institutions and forming a whole. The social world involves more than individuals. We are participating in something larger than ourselves. In other words, we're connected to the institutions that we can uh, dynamically change the way in which educate the, the way in which institutions um, influence society. So for example, our interactions within educational settings, um, the needs and demands we put on that system can change how it functions. Um, the same thing goes with uh, overall health systems, right? That as you make more demands on the system, and if you realize that it's not meeting your needs, that you could also influence it to change. So for example, when you study things like race or culture, we know that the health system has had to change to accommodate different belief systems, different cultural belief systems, different cultural practices, so they can be more influ uh, so that they can be much more adaptive and influential in those communities and they could actually help people achieve a sense of wellness. So to achieve health or to create a culture of wellness, it's important to take into account outside factors that could impact health and well-being. So this could be a neighborhood environment, peer groups. It could also include, uh, do you have a group of people who um, help you achieve sort of a positive sense of well-being? Um, are there groups of people that help, that are positive influences in our life? 
are there people that we can sustain meaningful relationships with? So part of what we'll be studying in this class over the next few weeks is this idea of health, not just from an individualistic sense, but as a part of a functioning social system. So in terms of the background on social determinants of health, um, it was important to note that uh, we needed to take, imp uh, we need to make efforts to improve health in the United States. Um, and so we know that when we want to improve health in the United States, that that really focuses on things like the healthcare system um, as a key driver of health and health outcomes. And we've talked a lot already about the Affordable Care Act or otherwise known as Obamacare and how it increased opportunities to improve health by expanding access to health coverage and supporting reforms to the health care delivery system. This is also the very thing that's under debate under the current administration. Um, one of the things that uh, has been at the core or the reason why different Republican senators have not voted for a complete repeal of the Affordable Care Act is because of the implications of uh, it has on different citizens. And so in terms of the and, and one of the sort of central statistics that have come across is that, for example, the new reforms could mean that anywhere between 20 to 30 million people would lose access to health care because they would not have insurance. And so when we talk about these things, these are all part of the system of health care that, um, that, 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 that politicians have sort of debated about over the last few years. So what we do know in terms of research and health, research demonstrates that improving population health and achieving health equity also will require broader approaches that address social, economic, and environmental factors that influence health. In other words, it's not just about saying, oh, we're going to give people insurance, but it's also about making sure we take, a, we take care of other issues that impact people's ability to have insurance. Um, so it could be, are people jobless or able to have jobs? Uh, are we creating social policies so that uh, companies that you work full time for may actually have to pay for health care? Um, those types of things. So the social determinants of health are the structural determinants and conditions in which people are born, grow, live, work, and age. And so, the, so in other words, these are areas that impact your overall health and well-being that are outside of the overall health system, right, or hospital system. And so these social determinants of health include factors like socioeconomic status, education, the physical environment, employment, and social support networks, as well as access to health care. So when we talk about these social determinants of health, we want to think about what are the different variables that impact whether or not someone has good or bad health care. And these are things that we started to talk about when you started reading the two heart attack story, uh, or the heart attack story, where we saw that different people of different socioeconomic classes ended up having very different experiences with the health system. So when we talk about the social determinants of health, these conditions are shaped, can be shaped by the amount of money, power, and resources that people have, all of which, which can be influenced by policy choices. So the social determinants of health affect factors that are related to health outcomes. So here's what I want to make sure that we're clear on in terms of what do we mean when we say health outcomes. Health outcomes are changes in health that result from measures or specific healthcare investments or interventions. In other words, what happens as a result of putting more money into the system? Or what happens as a result of making sure people have access to affordable insurance or healthcare? In other words, what we want to think about what, what is on the other side of that. Um, putting this another way, a health outcome can include things like um, how do you prevent death after a heart attack um, through in hospital care, right? So part of what is some of the interventions we may do um, in terms of making sure that you, someone does not, uh, uh, the, the, one of the ways in which you prevent death from a heart attack, right, is uh, in terms of, is the medicine you give people in the hospital. But also outside the hospital, it could be interventions can include change in diet. It could also include more exercise. It can include um, less sodium, less caffeine, right? These are interventions that can lead to a change in that health outcome, meaning that you won't die, right? Um, and so when you think about, uh, when you think about, for example, another health outcome, um, how, you know, how do you improve, you know, for example, you might want to improve a person's range of movement on their knee after ACL surgery, right? So some of the things that you may do or an intervention you may have um, 
sorry, let me rewind. So in terms of uh, improving a person's, a patient's quality of life after a surgery, um, let's say that, for example, they had torn their ACL. Um, it's not just that the AC, it's not just that you go in surgically to repair their ACL, but that you actually have to have specific interventions in order to make sure that they'll be able to walk again. So in order to, per, in order to improve a person's range of movement, the intervention may be physical therapy. The outcome, right, the health outcome will then be an improvement in their range of, in their range of movement, or it could also include their ability to have a fully functioning ability to walk. So when we talk about health outcomes, what happens as a result of an intervention? For those of us who are a little bit more visually inclined, this is another way of looking at the social determinants of health. Um, we, in this particular diagram that's part of the Healthy People 2020 uh, reading, um, part of what influences, uh, part of the things that influence uh, improvements in health or can be also, also associated with a decline in health is how people are doing in these five areas. So for example, if someone lives in a safe neighborhood, right, in a safe built environment, this can improve their health. health, uh, health. Um, in terms of economic stability, if they're not worried from day to day whether, where their paycheck comes from, it can decrease their stress. It can also increase their ability to buy healthy food. Right? And so you could do that for each of these five things, as we sort of previously mentioned. And so this is just a framework for us to begin to think about the social determinants of health. Um, this is just some background information to understand about the U.S. healthcare system. Uh, despite annual healthcare expenditures projected to exceed $3 trillion, health outcomes in the United States continue, continue to fall behind other developed countries. Recent analysis shows that although overall spending on social services and healthcare in the U.S. is comparable to other Western countries, the United States disproportionately spends less on social services and more on healthcare. So in other words, we don't spend as much on some of the supporting areas that could actually help improve, uh, improve um, health outcomes or the other support necessary beyond things like surgery or interventions. Um, that give people the support network or the support system after a medical issue to help them overcome the health uh, crisis that they faced. So when we look at, uh, in terms of the United States, in terms of improving the health of, of, of American people, this is, um, here's the impact of different factors on risk of premature death. So we know there are some things that are outside of our control, like genetics. Right. We also know that people can change their individual behaviors, right? Their eating habits. Um, are they um, are they making bad decisions in their life? Like, for example, taking drugs, etc. But there are other things that we can invest in, like access to health care or improving social and environmental factors, connecting people with each other, making sure that they're living in safe homes. So part of what we want to see here is that we understand that each area, right? Can impact, um, can impact your health and well-being. We also know when we talk about individual behavior, um, on the one hand, part of that can be about how an, one individual acts. But we also know that sometimes to change behaviors, it, it may need, mean that you need counseling supports or that you need other social, uh, social interventions that help influence how you think about particular issues. This could be education on particular issues. And so when we talk about individual behavior, I don't want you to think about that as separate from larger group activity. So based on a, a meta-analysis, nearly 50 studies, so a meta-analysis is essentially a study of different studies, right? So it does a, basically looks at all these different studies and then tries and basically looks at themes across those studies. So based on the meta-analysis of nearly 50 studies, researchers found that social factors, including education, racial segregation, social supports, and poverty accounted for over a third of total deaths in the United States in a year. Um, so part of what they're looking at here are areas where we could actually make some very significant sociological interventions. Right? And in the United States, the likelihood of premature death increases as income goes down. Again, not this is not a surprising correlation or relationship um, that uh, the more money you have, the less likely you are to suffer from a premature death. Similarly, low education levels are directly correlated with lower income, higher likelihood of smoking, and shorter life expectancy. Again, some of this you already heard the narrative on when you read um, the, the heart attack story, and we talked about this in class. 
We also know that children born to parents who have not completed high school are more likely to live in an environment that poses barriers to health. Their neighborhoods are more likely to be unsafe, have exposed garbage or litter, and have poor dilapidated housing and vandalism. They also are less likely to have sidewalks, parks, or playgrounds, recreation centers, or a library. Um, as we'll also talk about uh, down the road in a couple of weeks, is that all, you may also disproportionately live in uh, that individuals who are born to parents who haven't completed high school are also disproportionately likely to be in neighborhoods um, that suffer from forms of environmental racism. In addition, poor members of racial and ethnic minority communities are more likely to live in neighborhoods with concentrated poverty than their poor white counterparts. Um, and research, recent research showing, uh, shows that where a child grows up impacts his or her future economic opportunities as an adult. And it also suggests that environments in which an individual lives may have multi-generational impacts. In other words, we know in the United States that when you're born poor, you're disproportionately likely to remain poor um, in different ways or not be able to move out of, of particular social class status, uh, for example, because of accumulated debt and those types of things. So when we talk about how we can have, uh, what kind of interventions we can make, right, and how we begin to think about working on policy that addresses these different social determinants, this chart sort of uh, by the Kaiser Permanente Foundation um, sort of maps out some of the work that we can do. I'm not going to talk through this entire thing, but for example, you could look at the economic stability. Um, we know that if we help adopt policies related to employment, uh, we focus on improving income. This could be things like supporting living wage. Uh, if we look at ways in which we can reduce debt, um, help people in terms of making sure they're able to pay medical bills, that these could ha lead to uh, better health outcomes. And you can, and I want to make sure that as you, that as you go through these slides, that you make sure you take a look at this table and study it in depth to help understand how we can make different interventions to improve health outcomes. In terms of addressing the social determinants of health, um, it's important in terms of being able to create health equity. Uh, Long-standing re uh, long research has consistently identified disparities experienced by racial and ethnic minority, low-income, and other vulnerable communities as being having a negative impact on health. The Department of Health and Human Services defines health disparities as differences in health outcomes that are closely linked with social, economic, and environmental disadvantage. This is something I want you to make sure that you understand that you understand the definition of health disparity, the differences in health outcomes that are closely linked with social, economic, and environmental disadvantage. Because as we move forward in, in the rest of this class, this is what we're really studying, um, those disparities, what is impacting different groups differently. In Healthy People 2020, it goes on to state that health disparities adversely affect groups of people who have systematically experienced greater obstacles to health based on their racial or ethnic group, religion, socioeconomic status, etc. Right? We see in every one of these different um, social categories, we actually see very different disparities depending on what we're talking about. Right? In some cases, this may have uh, a much stronger deteriorating effect on mental health. In others, it could be physical health. In some, it could be both it is important to kind of keep this idea of disparity in mind and that these definitions recognize that health disparities are rooted in the social, economic, and environmental context in which people live. So make sure you understand the social determinants of health, understand the framework, um, take a look particularly of ways in which we can intervene, um, and start thinking about what we can do to change the health system in positive ways. So um, if you have any questions, make sure you just email me.